concept of consciousness in Duce. Welcome to part five of our online course on the Duce idea. In the past sessions, we've been concentrating on learning about the philosophical principle of the Duce idea. Earlier, we learned that the concepts of independence and uh, creativity and uh, consciousness form the three pillars of the Juche concept of human beings, which forms a core of the philosophical concept of Juche. These are all interrelated. Humans cannot be independent and creative without having consciousness. Today, we will learn about consciousness, which is defined as the, four, as the third core attribute of man, according to the Duce idea. Consciousness is different to independence and creativity, but at the same time, it is closely related to them. Comrade Kim Jong-il, in his immortal treat treatise on the Duce idea, published in 1982, wrote as follows. Consciousness is an attribute of social man which determines all his endeavours to understand and reshape the world and in himself. Because he has consciousness, man understands the world and laws of its motion and development and reshapes nature and society as he desires. Consciousness guarantees the independence and creativity of man, the social being, and ensures his purposeful cognition and practice, end of quotation. I think the above quotation gives a very good explanation of the concept of consciousness. Consciousness is about understanding the surrounding world and how it develops and its uh, laws of development. It is about cognition. To change the world, we must be conscious. Without consciousness, man cannot do anything. He cannot exhibit independence and creativity. He cannot transform the world. Consciousness underpins independence and creativity. Like independence uh, and creativity, it is socially acquired. It's not innate or inborn. Uh, and, you know, we stress that consciousness, uh, uh, just like independence and creativity, is the attribute of a, a social being. Consciousness, like independence and creativity, is what distinguishes man from other living things in the world. Whilst other living things uh, act through instinct, man conceives the plan of his action through thought before starting cognition and transformation. Consciousness is a sophisticated function of man's brain, which is the most developed of man's physical organs. The brain plays the central role in the activity of human life and consciousness, which is a function of the brain, commands and regulates all activities of man. Some may think it is stating the obvious, and some may even disagree. But all the actions of man are conscious actions. Let's give a practical example from everyday life. Something that may be uh, familiar to some people. It is man's instinct to wake up at sunrise. However, one may need to wake up before sunrise to go to work or maybe to travel to an airport. So conscious man uses an alarm clock. He sets it for the time he needs to wake up. Uh, this uh, is an example of the conscious activity of man. It can be said that conceiving and planning are the first process of all the activities to cognize and transform and are a key factor that ensures the purposeful cognition and practice. In other words, the cognition and practice of man are the process of conceiving an idea and making 
a plan and putting them into practice. This shows that all activities are conducted by man are consciously controlled actions. When man encounters a series of problems and situations in the course of cognition and transformation, he neither sits idle, nor does he go on with what he's doing without proper measure. He copes with them positively and adjusts and controls all his activities so that he can achieve the goals of his activities. For example, when destruction is caused by flooding, man, conscious of the damage caused, uses scientific knowledge to take flood prevention uh, measures. And, you know, similarly, you know, in regard to, you know, forests being destroyed by forest fires, you know, man takes uh, fire prevention uh, measures. Similarly, man has become aware of the contradictions of exploitative societies and has strived to overthrow them and build new societies without exploitation and oppression. In other words, socialist societies. While consciousness directs all the activities of a person, ideological consciousness is the most important. The consciousness, uh, the characteristic of ideological consciousness is that it is a form of social consciousness reflecting man's demands and interests. Man leads a, a life under different natural surroundings and social conditions. Some are favourable to man and some are not. For this reason, man comes to have some requirements and interests in the course of his social life. Ideological consciousness uh, is a consciousness which reflects such requirements and interests of people through rational thinking. The character of ideological consciousness is determined by the demands interests of a class in a given society. In antagonistic class societies, there exists an independent ideological consciousness reflecting the desire for freedom from the fetters of both nature and society. But there is also a reactionary ideological consciousness mirroring a desire to oppress and exploit others. And also there is a slavish ideological consciousness characterized by obedience to and submission to exploitation and oppression the change of development uh, the change and development of society gives rise to a new ideological consciousness ideological consciousness is different from scientific knowledge which is a reflection of objective realities ideological consciousness is also different from feelings which are a direct an emotional experience of reality. Ideological consciousness, scientific knowledge and feelings belong equally to the category of consciousness and their difference is relative. They are expressed in a close unity. For example, the socialist patriotism of the DPRK is based on the knowledge of the superiority of the duce based socialist system of the DPRK, coupled with the feeling of love for the socialist system and the ideological consciousness of the need to defend the socialist system of the DPRK. Or to give another example of our own work uh, in the KFA, the Korean Friendship Association is based on the knowledge that the stories of the DPRK uh, in the mainstream media about the DPRK false. This is combined with the ideological consciousness that we need to defend the DPRK with no uh, concession and the feeling uh, of the need to defend the truth. Consciousness is the most superior attribute of man, which makes him a powerful and superior being. Of course, independence and creativity are two uh, also essential uh, features of man which make him the most superior and powerful being. However, independence and creativity 
presuppose consciousness and are guaranteed by it. Consciousness makes man the dominator and transformer of the world by ensuring the independent and creative activities of man who understands and remoulds the world. That is why the conscious, why consciousness is the highest of all the attributes of man. Comrade Kim Jong-il defined consciousness as one of the essential features of man and gave a comprehensive and profound philosophical expression of its essence, its manifestations, its position, and uh, that it holds in the essential features of man, thus making an enduring contribution to further developing the philosophical viewpoint on man as expounded by the great Duce idea. Thank you for listening. The questions I'm going to set uh, for uh, the next session is uh, question one, is consciousness the same as knowledge? Question two, what is the role of consciousness in transforming society? Question three, what kind of consciousness exists? Question four, how does consciousness, independence and creativity